you know, they treat you like a family. And, uh, you know, obviously I've known uncle forever. And, uh, you know, uh, there is no more introduction except that, you know, I think there are very few people like him. <laughs> Over to you, uncle. Uh, Jahind, and uh, thank you, Dr. Shivupille. Thank you, Sora, for the very kind words. Uh, well, before I start, I think it's a very difficult thing for me to do because Sora's father has been a mentor uh, for uh, nearly five decades now, 50 years, so which is a long time. And uh, I have always looked up to him as a role model and uh, like Sora said, family. Uh, so uh, it's just that. Uh, uh, I would like to start off with thanking uh, you all for inviting me out here. It's a great uh, honor for me uh, as a soldier. And I think this honor is not for me alone. This honor is to the soldiers uh, who are serving uh, in armed forces, uh, who are deployed uh, along the, uh, our borders uh, right now, uh, who are providing security to us, uh, and also the veterans. So this honor is actually due to them. And uh, on their behalf, I'm here to uh, accept uh, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, I see Jan Sundaram here. Uh, thank you very much for joining and uh, it's a great opportunity. And these are very difficult times, very challenging times. Uh, and I will not cover that. You know it better than me. Uh, we have had the COVID 2020 defining year. We had the COVID, uh, which changed uh, a few things. And we as a nation were doing rather well. Uh, but then uh, uh, we had a China challenge coming up along the line of actual control. Uh, which diverted our attention, diverted our resources, diverted our energies. Uh, and uh, that challenge just continues. And for us, China is always a long-term threat. Uh, so I'll come back to China and to Pakistan and our later. Uh, let me come to the main uh, topic. And uh, I will, uh, excuse me if I use the word I too often, uh, because the parachute regiment and me are interlinked. Uh, I'm not the parachute regiment, sorry. But the parachute regiment, uh, I belong to the parachute regiment. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I belong to the Paris Regiment. It's not easy to be uh, part of the regiment, especially for a man like me who was very average in his academy, uh, very, very average during his uh, training days, uh, very difficult uh, to get through the probation, which uh, I, di I didn't pass out of IMA in the top bracket. I was in the low, lowest bracket. And uh, we are 14 of us who joined uh, the Paris Regiment, and only five were selected out of the 14. And I was fortunate to be one of them. So what is the parachute regiment? A lot of people ask me the question, what, 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 are you, what are you all about? And this is something which uh, I've been searching myself and uh, what are we? Uh, we are actually a bunch of misfits uh, who fit well together. Uh, you know, soldiers are bad in any case, but we are the worst. We are extremes in everything. And uh, we are a bunch of misfits who uh, fit well together. That's what I will say. And uh, we have uh, the Indian Army, which is 1.2 lakh, which is the second largest army in the world, uh, one of the most uh, battle-hardened, combat-rich force in the world. It is also the largest voluntary force in the world. We, we, we never uh, you know, understand this, largest voluntary force in the world. Uh, China is the largest army, but it's not one of And uh, so we are the largest voluntary force in the world. So out of the 1.2 lakh, uh, we have the paratroopers of a little less than 10,000. And uh, out of the voluntary force, the only voluntary regiment in the, uh, or uh, the voluntary uh, arm, and it's not only the parachute regiment, it also uh, is the other armed services. Uh, as we all know, we have uh, the army divided into three. Uh, one is the combat, uh, uh, you know, the combat power, uh, that are the combat arms, uh, that is the infantry, uh, which is about, uh, uh, three, uh, about three lakhs plus. Uh, then we have uh, the com uh, armor and the mechanical inventory. Then the combat support arms, which is the artillery, the engineers, uh, uh, the signals. And then with the combat support services of the Army Ordnance Corps, the Army Supply Corps, and other services, EME, and of course, the Army you know, Armed Forces Medical Services, uh, which have done a tremendous job over the years, uh, uh, especially you know, for people like me. Uh, I have 23 bones broken on the body. I've been under the knife 13 times. Uh, uh, and I superintended as shaped one. That means I was physically fit when I superintended it. I've had five knee surgeries. And uh, Sora would relate to it because whenever I saw Sora when he was young, he was always having a bandage from the other. So <laughs> that is the highest uh, uh, job which we have done. And uh, that is thanks to the SMS, which is about 10,000 doctors and about another 100,000 uh, of medical and support staff and administrative staff. And uh, today, uh, not only to them, but each of the COVID warriors uh, who are at the risk of his own life, uh, the risk of his 
risk of infecting is uh, near and dear ones that kitten can uh, continue to do a, you know, absolutely a, something which is uh, a service to the humanity, service to the Indians, uh, hats off to them, each one of them. Uh, so having said that, uh, so what do you do with the para? So you, when you, you are a volunteer, you proceed opt for it. And uh, when you opt for it, uh, you are probated. You are under a probation. It doesn't matter whether you opted as a uh, rifleman or a jawan uh, or an officer, uh, you have to go through the probation period. And as a probationer, uh, you are not a leader, you're not an officer, you're not a jawan, you're just a probationer. Uh, and the probation, I, I must tell you, is uh, one of the toughest uh, uh, which uh, anyone can go through. It's about three months long. Mm. It is not only physical fitness, physical fitness is only one part of it. Uh, it is not only uh, mental uh, stress we're talking about, emotional stress we're talking about. Uh, from the day one, you're being judged 24 hours. You get to sleep about two to three hours a day uh, and continuously for about three months. Uh, you go through extensive uh, physical activity. Uh, you go through, you wade through uh, slams, uh, you uh, run about 100 kilometers with your, about uh, 23, 24 kgs on your back, uh, which is not easy. Uh, you are part of a group which is tremendously under pressure to perform. And uh, the success rate in probation is uh, about 20%. Uh, you can opt out any time you want. Uh, and we have about uh, 50 to 60% uh, of the probationers opting out in the first uh, couple of weeks, uh, another about uh, 15 to 20 percent about another month or so, and some survive. The aim of the probation is just to you know, try to tell you that you don't have a saturation point. Uh, it is just that. You don't have a saturation point, and we check whether you have the right attitude to be uh, a paratrooper, a special forces soldier. Uh, you could fit into a good team as a team uh, member, uh, and uh, you would be a good leader. Uh, you will uh, willingly do whatever is required of you uh, for your uh, unit, for your sub team, for your regiment. Uh, so it, it is all encompassing. It is uh, you know it is more intangible than tangible. It's not a question of skills. It's not a question of knowledge. Uh, it's more a question of uh, a never say die attitude which which we're looking at. So at the end of about uh, three months probation, we have a selection rate of about twenty percent, which is uh, which is by any international standards. Uh, 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 as good or as bad. Uh, so that is the standards followed uh, every day, uh, whether it's the Western world or the Russians or the Chinese also, I mean, the China, with the PLS special forces, uh, they also look at 20, 25%. So some of that works out uh, because of uh, a number of people break down. It is not easy to take on this probation. So I'm very fortunate uh, to have been selected because uh, uh, no, the same, we have a fair intention, a fair intention of the workers, other players, no doubt about it. But my heart was always in the paratroops. And I, I decided to join the paratroops because I was one of the weakest uh, in India in that course. So just to prove a point, uh, I read the, uh, I, I, I used to read a lot. I still do read a lot. And uh, I, I read a book by Ryan Connell, uh, The Longest Day. And I said, if you want to join the army, you want to join the paras. So I told my friends, my colleagues, uh, my course mates, I want to join the paras. They all laughed at me. Honestly, they all laughed at me. They said, I'm going to join the paras. You know? That was something special. Uh, but that was the second term of India, the first year. Uh, by the time I came to the sixth term, uh, everyone knew my determination and my postmates and friends used always say, okay, para trooper. And I uh, went to IMA and uh, I had I, I, I went and bought a Barun Bere, uh, which I was not supposed to wear, but uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, para trooper was also supposed to do discipline cases. That discipline is very, very bad. Atrocious discipline. So, like, uh, tell us to do, do drill, we cannot do drill. Uh, so the discipline is small things is exceedingly high. The discipline is the no the high train is uh, pretty good. So I should get a maroon there and I. So everyone will say they are they're, they're impressed. You know I should take panga in the sense that uh, if it's hot you have to go through COVID restriction and things like that. Anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, uh, I joined uh, the parachute regiment. I was probated and I was very fortunate to uh, join one of the best battalions, uh, which is six para. Each battalion is the best, and we take. Try and calling ourselves the best because when you call yourself the best, you have to live up to those standards. And there's a very tough competition within the regiment of being the best. It is the best regiment, and within the best regiment, we each put in things that they are the superheroes, better than the others, better than the best. And uh, that is uh, what uh, the regiment is all about. It's the regiment which calls out who dares win. You know, silly things we do during probation. It's not only, you know, you, you want to drink. And I, I, I never used to drink. Uh, I remember, I, I used to. 
uh, I was not, I was 20 years old, 20 years old, and I've been four years in uh, training. Uh, I belonged to a Senate school before that, three years in Senate school. Uh, I went to Senate school because I did not, I was in hostel in St. Xavier's, and then I was pulled out of hostel and I was studying mother school uh, in Delhi. And my parents used to, you know, very, uh, they were very bad. My parents, you know, they, I never, I was not so good in studies. So they said, what are you doing? You know, study well. And every day I used to listen to their, you know, rants. So I decided to, I said, Dad, I'm going to join the army, so I'm going to join the, you know, Senate school. So I applied to Senate school, got selected. So I had been a, you know, Fauji all along my life. I have not seen anything more than Fauji. And uh, even after retirement, uh, which is in about seven years, uh, till about 1st of January this year, uh, I was still working uh, uh, as a director of a think tank uh, of the Ministry of Defense. So I haven't seen much beyond. So th that is the high part of it. But looking at uh, the parachute regiment, uh, we are uh, about uh, 14 battalion strong. We should have been 15, but we are 14 battalion strong. Uh, we have uh, the uh, nine parachute battalions, uh, and we have five uh, uh, para airborne battalions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, our composition. Uh, we have a para brigade, which is also known as the fire brigade, uh, which is uh, directly controlled by the military officers and directorate. I was fortunate to be the director of military operations, and uh, that is where uh, we have uh, uh, grown to be. Uh, what are our contributions? Uh, with, uh, what, do, what do the paratroopers actually do? You know, we are uh, the sole uh, arm. Uh, we are also uh, uh, employed uh, in the most critical missions. Uh, we operate at the strategic and operational level and, uh, you know, to create uh, uh, decision dilemmas uh, uh, in case of war, uh, when we go to war that end. Uh, the parachute regiment, if the para brigade is employed, the para battalion is employed, the para is employed, we create decision dilemmas at the national level. So that is basically our job. It is not only destruction, it's to create decision dilemmas because we will be employed uh, in the center of gravity where we seek a decision. So uh, that is uh, 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 the main thing is, it's not that they're better than the army. The army is very, very good. And each, each regiment is uh, very, uh, it's a history, uh, very proud uh, uh, regiments we have. Uh, but uh, wherever the things are critical, uh, that is where employment is. So uh, le let me give a few examples. You know, this is uh, an age of uh, presentism and recentism. So I'll start uh, not in a chronological order. Uh, let me start with the, the most well-known, uh, which is of uh, September 2016, the surgical strikes. I think most of us would have uh, known about surgical strikes. Most of us have seen the movie Uri, which is, which is a fair representation. I won't say it is not. It is a representation of the uh, actions uh, of Uri. Uh, 26 September 2016, a dark night. What did they do? Uh, seven teams, seven targets, seven hours, and they had to achieve this. Uh, for them, uh, failure was not an option. And success, not a probability. Uh, let me put it very simply. Uh, why failure is not an option? Uh, look at the seven teams. You know, the line of control, the India Pakistan line of control, is the most heavily manned and mined, uh, I won't say a border, but the line in the world. It's the most heavily manned. It is, uh, we have troops on either side, it is fully manned. The man for man, weapon for weapon, either side, uh, and it is heavily mined. And in that, to insert uh, on foot, it is a foot insertion, not a helicopter insertion. Unlike Myanmar, uh, which was in June of 2016, which is 15, which is a which is a helicopter insertion, this is a foot insertion. And uh, to insert at night uh, in an active uh, line of control, uh, which is fully mined, uh, and they have, uh, you know, uh, we also have villages, but we have lesser villages uh, along the line of control uh, on the on the Pakistani Kofut Kashmir side. Uh, it is full of villages. And as we all know, uh, when the villages are there and you pass through villages at night or even daytime, the dogs park. So you have to maintain surprise. And so it is not easy to uh, insert whatever kilometers it was, okay, maybe 1, 2, 3, 10 kilometers, 12 kilometers. It's not easy to insert at night. Well, insertion had to be full, but you couldn't lose surprise insertion. After insertion, you executed the task of hitting the targets, which are basically the terrorist uh, uh, camps or launch pads, uh, which is, it is a, it is, Supposedly preemptive, but it is more punitive. It is both preemptive and punitive. Punitive in the sense that uh, we had to uh, pay it back to uh, Pakistan crossing a red line in Uri on uh, the 18th of September, and uh, which we lost 20 soldiers in that. So uh, these uh, seven teams, uh, they went in, and these are all, all uh, teams of the uh, special forces. This is your two battalions, 
I just said, Okay, Punjab, 350 kilometers apart, simultaneously going in. And then they executed the operation and destroying the targets. Now, once the targets were destroyed, the surprise was given away. And then they had to extricate themselves back across the line of control now. Game left them. So I'm just trying to, you know, uh, 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 try to picturize for you what it meant. And we could not left a man behind. So we know what happened to Abhinandan, uh, how it was done. Had we left a man behind, injured or otherwise, you know, uh, the complete success with which year he would, which would have been, which would, which would have nullified, uh, the aim would not have been achieved. It was, it was a strategic aim. We as a nation had lost our, lost our strategic patience. Uh, there was a there's a limit to what we can do. We had Mumbai, we uh, that time we couldn't do anything because the uh, Americans were occupying the bases. We really couldn't have escalated. Uh, so uh, there, there were there were reasons to that. I'm not trying to say this government that government. I'm, I'm a pol totally a political, but this is the first time at the strategic level we did this. Uh, we showed a strategic restraint in the target selection, but we also demonstrated strategic resolve uh, in that that we want to raise the cost of Pakistan's low cost attack war. We converted to a high cost low attack war, and this is what uh, these troops they did. They went in and they came back without a single casualty. And mind you, I, I, I will hats off to them when I talk about it. I can understand having commanded, uh, having been on the line of control many years, having commanded uh, the, the Jory Kun sector, uh, which is a very active sector. Uh, I can understand what must have gone through the minds of not the troops who are doing it, but the commanders in chain. And uh, it was 26 September, I remember I had a, a, a late afternoon meeting with the, the then Raksha Mantri, uh, Mr. Parikar, Manohar Parikar. And it was a 20 minute meeting, went out about 45 minutes. So he was cool. I don't know, one didn't get an inkling of what was going to happen that, that night. Uh, he was really cool. And he, he, we, 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 I had to give a friend or something. And uh, he really gave us time. Uh, it, there was no inkling whatsoever. And we took everyone by surprise because no one thought that India would do such, a, such an action. And uh, I spoke to the commanding officer. I said, David, what is going on in your mind? He said, sir, they asked me a question. Uh, what are the chances of success? I told the 500%. I said, you fool, how could you, how could you have told them that 500%? Because 500% is, you know, he said, sir, they won't have let me go otherwise. I had to carry a bluff. And I said, uh, but what, why are you sure of doing it? He said, that, sir, if we can't do it, no one else can do it. So let, let's take a chance. I said, do you, do you realize the strategic implications of failing, failing? He said, no, sir, I don't talk of failure. I don't think of failure. So that was this, uh, this commanding officer of the battalion. Uh, uh, really, hats off to them. My heart goes to them. Uh, I think I, I should also uh, take the thing. So th that is what we're talking about, surgical strike. So we have proven a point. Uh, you cross the red line, we'll give it back to you. So there is a change in that. And this was uh, made possible by, uh, very proudly, I must say, my regiment. And uh, not that we've not done it earlier. Uh, but the earlier were different, uh, you know, different level of operations. There were tactical level operations. I was involved in with them. Uh, but there were tactical level. There were strategic level. So uh, that was the surgical strikes. Uh, uh, going a little down the line, uh, we all know about Cargill. Uh, we lived with Cargill. We saw Cargill was the first operation, uh, a sort of a war, a conflict, uh, which was brought to our drawing rooms by, you know, by the television, Barkhadas and Gaurav Samant and others who were there, Vishnu Swam and others. I remember them. And uh, uh, Cargill again uh, was critical that we recapture those heights. We were surprised. There's no doubt about it. But we were surprised. And my battalion uh, was the one which had uh, constructed the post at Bajrang, uh, where Soro Kalia was ambushed. And you know, we all heard the uh, story of Captain Soro Kalia, how, how he was captured and tortured and then returned back thereafter. And having been in the sector, in the sector well, and I was sent from, I was in the army for Delhi, I was sent uh, to Kargil uh, to get some uh, things done out there. So uh, 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 all the complete all battalions of our regiment were pushed into uh, Kargil, and uh, we we, we uh, uh, you know uh, later on uh, what we did out there is uh, well known. Uh, Piper did a wonderful job. So did, uh, uh, the battalions and uh, my own battalion was there. Six para, five para, six para, seven para were part of the uh, uh, the para brigade was sent in. And uh, one of the things which I've done much later, I should have realized it myself, but uh, you know, in the heat of things, you won't realize it. I was speaking to uh, uh, a Pakistani brigade who's written a book on Kargil, uh, co authored with uh, an American intelligence officer, uh, uh, Jack. So when they, uh, you know, they, they started drilling me, this is what I'm talking of uh, about 2000 when we met. Uh, so uh, they said, uh, you know, one of the things which uh, uh, made uh, uh, the Pakistani pullback was the employment of the Para Brigade onto the eastern sector. That is, the parabola is in the Mashko, east of Mashko. And they thought 
that the para brigade would cross the line of control and there's the only single axis you know like we have zozilla uh, leading up to kargil they have a burzil by pass which leads up to a place called shakma uh, which is opposite the kargil sector and there's a single road and burzil by is the only pass and when the para brigade was employed uh, just uh, south of uh, uh, burzil by uh, burzil by pass so the pakistan is thought that the para brigade is going to cut them off and they going to be starved of the logistics so that is one of the major reasons uh, for an early uh, withdrawal uh, uh, and of course they had failed we had started recapturing heights after heights so starting from tolo link to tiger hill to 5520 cp india gate to 4815 uh, we we just started your know, paribar talab uh, zozilla one zulu zulu one zulu two zulu three uh, we just started capturing all those heights uh, one by one so it was a mix of us a mix of us thing and we had destroyed our air force had done a fantastic job destroying mankadalo uh, but one of the key factors at the strategic level was at the employment of the current brigade so uh, what it does is the paratroopers is it is not only what they actually do but the threat in being the threat in being that look uh, the uh, the nation the india and then and our forces and front the para brigade so this is the criticality uh, this is supposed to be the you know the ace of spades or the must sort of a thing so that is uh, about paratroopers about uh, 99 vj uh, coming down to there another operation which we carried out then 87 uh, sri lanka most of the battalions were there in sri lanka uh, doing a wonderful job uh, what they do but they have all critical jobs including that you know uh, university uh, uh, you know so hard of the university operations uh, which is carried out 10 para commandos that uh, were back on was there he escaped from there that's a separate issue altogether uh, but uh, they, they we lost a lot of men in fighting say kalai and then the para but uh, 10 para went in to rescue them uh, so they were also there uh, another operation i like to talk about a little while was the uh, waldies Uh, I happened to be uh, a, a part of it. I was the brigade major of the brigade, the brigade, and uh, we had this great commander, incredible you know, soldier, fantastic man, uh, the, no better soldier I have seen. And uh, it was on the third of November, the early morning. I got a call uh, from the army headquarters uh, uh, saying, "Okay, be prepared for an operation. Uh, so this is what it is. You move to one." You know, first when the call came, I I couldn't believe. You know, I thought. Uh, you know it was a vice chief army staff general broderick from the line was there to be chief and the vice chief don't speak to you know majors and brigade majors that you know, there's a you know we have a hierarchy a very strict hierarchy so uh, i thought myself staff of sir myself heard it wrong and those were telephones also you know we know what telephones were the uh, communication system not so good uh, so he had to say i'm general broderick the vice chief i said literally stood up on my on the chair uh, from my chair and i said yes sir and then they gave me the orders for that so uh, what we did was uh, we mobilized uh, from a cold start and within 16 hours of the first indication of an impending operation uh, literally 3.5 km from base from agra to bale uh, we had rescued uh, the president of maldives and without a single casualty uh, when the orders were given to me i did not know where maldives was that time you know google mata was not there uh, try to get a hold of a uh, You know, atlas uh, from the library, and as, as you know, as it always happens, you know, Murphy's law. The library was locked. Uh, library is never locked, but that day the, the librarian thought he would lock the library and you know do something else. So we had to block open the library lock. That was our our day. We couldn't we could read the word Maldives, but we couldn't read the word Malay. Uh, we didn't know where Malay was. Uh, we were totally blind. Uh, we try to you know search for Malay. We try to. Get to the tourist office. Uh, if they had any maps, they had nothing. And uh, but fortunately, took a long story short. Uh, it was uh, aided by my unit six para. We had seven para. We had three para. The para brigade, and we took off from Agra at around uh, five thirty in the evening and landed around nine fifty uh, at Malay. It was a you know Harule uh, uh, airfield. Some some of you must have been to Malay. Malay is a lovely place. If you're not been, you should go. Maldives is just too beautiful not to go. Uh, of course, when we went out there, we were in uniform. We had nothing to eat, nothing to drink. Uh, we had just moved from our offices with our weapons and ammunition and explosives. Uh, and uh, when we reached, uh, you know, the air, the, when we reached the airport, we realized that Malay and Halulia are two two different islands. Uh, we thought that Malay was a you know, uh, we are Indians. We don't know how we don't know how small countries can be. We are too big, and all of Malay is about uh, two square kilometers plus. And Halule is the airport, which is about two two kilometers uh, uh, across from Malay. And we landed Halule, and mind you, the airstrip is about 46 meters wide at the two ends, and about 250 meters wide. It's, of course, it's developed now, 
and they were chinese have made a bridge also on aluletu bale a lot of things were changed uh, so when we landed out there it was totally blind we were to drop out there as we dropped we would have gone to the water we would have killed and i had the code word in me yesterday in that street and the code word came the code word of uh, you know adya adya means you know uh, in the in the in the lali uh, adya you would know better uh, adya adya something to light and then the light should come off three times but someone could have given that to the atc you know there was a chap who managing the atc gave the code uh, he could have given it under pressure or when we were landing someone could have just driven a uh, you know a cycle or a jeep across the runway parked it out there and uh, all of it would have been you know lost or gone so we had the choice to either jump uh, uh, in the small place uh, which is very difficult uh, we at night uh, or uh, to land and uh, when the code word came i went to my commander as it's a uh, decision time what do we do and mind you he was just said you know we land and he told the uh, captain devur the uh, devur son uh, he was a komachi he was flying with him and he said uh, devur we land he said hey sir and we landed and uh, you know he didn't like it because you know, later on the group and devur came a lot of you know flat for landing uh, on an unsecured air strip uh, but to cut a long story short we did manage uh, uh, to land we did manage to traverse the sea and uh, six para that to you know with the north indian troops who had never seen the sea earlier uh, we did manage to get boats uh, uh, go across so we were luck very lucky to find the president was a safe house how do you get to a safe house how do you communicate to the president so uh, but then it was you know god god that way i firmly believe you know all god the indian uh, when in need uh, they always help us out uh, we were very lucky that day Uh, we got to the other side uh, we there was a lot of firing going on uh, we got hold of the president uh, by by default totally by default totally by default it's just luck uh, there was a chap uh, here rj delan is 6 feet 3 inches tall uh, he was leading it a grumpy chap uh, he caught hold of a chap very scary uh, with his beard open uh, blood eyes because we not slept also he was working and he says well there's your president says, i don't know president he said who do you know he said i know someone so he took us to someone who took us to a minister who took us to the president and once the president is captured uh, we were very happy uh, not captured sorry rescued uh, we were very happy we were to bring him back to india so but he he, he is the president he is a politician so when he told him now you know with the competence of the government of india you take we take you back to india he says no no i'm not going back to india at all because he was to be sworn in as the president on the 12th of november and uh, he didn't want to leave is now now that the indian troops so they don't want to leave so the uh, Because we had no choice, now we had him. We did not know the situation, Malay, and my commander, you know, what thinking? He says, you know, now that we have rescued him, we cannot lose him. If he dies now, if he is killed now in firing, I think we'll get a sorry figure in the international. And then we rescued him. We took him to a safe place. We had to sanitize the complete headquarters. Then he said, four in the morning, I'll speak to your prime minister. At four in the morning, we got him a call through to uh, Prime Minister Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. Prime Minister at that time, we spoke. Whatever the conversation took place, we got orders to let him be there. Uh, so this was one of the operations which is uh, very well, uh, not well known in the uh, in the military world, uh, but in the strategic community and uh, among the defense experts, uh, it is an operation which is uh, very well respected for its execution, uh, not so much for the planning, uh, but for the execution. so we 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 went in blind and we executed so well we all seen you know the zero dark thirty the osama bin laden how the planet how the do it uh, they took months to do it you know the americans took about 10 years i i gone to uh, washington for something and uh, in the dinner they made me sit with the uh, uh, you know with the state department pp and uh, having this formal dinner they asked me is the general what do you feel uh, uh, is the is this 2.5 i'm talking about uh, is osama in uh, in india in kashmir So I was eating. I said uh, no, uh, and I kept eating. He says, "You seem very confident." I said, "Yes, I'm very confident." He says, "How are you so confident?" I said, "If he was there, would have got him by now." Uh, a very undiplomatic statement to make, uh, uh, which is you know, which is not right when you you know uh, when you talk at that level. Uh, but it was that straight from the heart of a soldier. Uh, our professor just got born and got him to some of the leaders of India. मतलब कहीं से उसको ढूंढ के निकाल के उसको मार देंगे न्यूट्रलाइज कर देंगे पकड़ लेंगे कुछ भी कर देंगे बट कर देंगे कैसे करेंगे वी डोंट हैव द बेस्ट वेपनरी वी डू नॉट हैव द बेस्ट आई एस आर वी डोंट हैव द बेस्ट गिजबो द टेक्निक टेक्नोलॉजी बट वी विल गेट दैट चैट एंड दे हैड गॉटन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम 
so they took years to get in uh, whereas we went in blind and got it so that you know uh, something so uh, that was the uh, 88 obviously very close to my heart though uh, but it is known to be one of the uh, you know uh, when you talk uh, of, of 12 best uh, uh, surgical operation in the world it is one of them uh, because it was a surgical operation we lost no one and uh, precision uh, precision uh, uh, operation we carried out uh coming down to the 71 war i'm i'm not talking about cict operations because we are on the forefront the maximum casualties we have suffered uh, as a regiment uh, the maximum uh, awards we have got a shock at chapter mohit sharma general uh, can i just ask uh, you a question yeah please, please please how much of this is documented uh well uh, 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 it is documented uh, in the right quarters but it is uh, not fully is not an open domain i write about it i speak about it. uh what i could i say is uh, uh, is uh, uh, my perception but a truthful version as truthful as one can be uh, after so many years but yes it is documented uh, we we had uh, written this report on the 3rd of december 1988 1988 and uh, uh, and a very frank a very honest report uh, but like like all reports uh, you know what happens in the reports and i'm i have to blame i was the dg on the you know i'm not doing anything else <laughs> because <laughs> i was the custodian of all the reports Okay. What about the reason, sir? So this okay, is documented in, in some ways. I have written about it. Others have written. Read Joshi has written. Doctor Dubur has written. Uh, it is published in a book. Uh, there is a book called Mission Overseas. There is Shah Singh. Well, I got the copy out here. Uh, he is into a long hour. He has published that book. So it is documented in parts. Uh, so, but then Thank the you. actual Thank thing, you. actual thing, no one will, sir. As you well know, you know the militaries no. are uh, known for not uh, being very open uh, world over, <laughs> and rightly so, I suppose. Thank you. Uh, so no, 71 war. 71 war. I'll 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 have to uh, hurry up a little. Uh, 40 minutes. All I've got. Don't uh, don't worry about the time. From our no, point no, of view. No, <laughs> you 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 are busy people, so I can't uh, really. No. Uh, no, we are not busy so, at all. <laughs> we are here so, to uh, listen to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, 71 war. Uh, again, it was. Uh, I will. Uh, you know, it was one of the best. Uh, again, one of the best operations ever carried out. We talked that we are not joined. And I was heading the center of John Gorham's study, the Minister of Defence, uh, uh, very recently. Uh, so it was one of the you know, best joint operations there. Of course, the Army, Navy, and uh, we we had about 12 to 13 days to finish the operation at strategic level. That was the time which was given to the other, by the Soviet Union to us. Uh, beyond that, they said we can't really help you because you know the, the geopolitics is different. You know, war is different. Geopolitics takes place. In, Uh, so uh, the time limit was 14 days. Bangladesh is full of rivers. You know, all the rivers meet out there. There's lots of things. It's not easy to cross rivers and uh, to get you get to Dhaka. We and the Soviet Soviets said, okay, the treaty of friendship is fine, but 14 days at best. And we had the seventh fleet already coming in, setting the Bay of Bengal. We all know that. So the time was at a premium. Uh, so it was on the 11th of uh, December that, uh, and the DGM of that time was. Uh, Great class, one of the best, uh, you know, leaders the country is known. Field Marshal Manik Shah was the chief, and the General Inder Gill uh, was the battalion military operations. He was a paratrooper. So uh, the para brigade uh, flew, took off from, you know, airfield around Calcutta, uh, Kolai Konda, other airfields, and two para the battalion group, they dropped at a place called Tangail and captured the bridge at Tongli, thus getting the. Giving a bridgehead, bridge to the Indian Army uh, uh, spearheads uh, to move to Dhaka, and the rest of the brigade because everyone thought the brigade had taken off. So the Pakistan is really one now. Totally, the brigade has taken off. Brigade is a you know three battalions plus, and the rest of the brigade minus uh, two para, they were landed in the western sector and fought the next six seven days. They fought in the western sector, but the Tangail drop and uh, was led by that time Colonel Panu. He got a Mahavir Chakra, Jan Panu, Kulwant Panu. and the match well, well it is given that patrol was a match but he was the madness of the match uh, no literally well, i i have seen him swim, swim across the indus river in the month of january uh, in a place called karu which is the uh, higher than lake if, if anything can be bad it can be well, it, it, in the month of january the temperature is at minus 30 degrees centigrade and, and he was a good swimmer so that was general panu Uh, later on, he, he he became a general, and he was the first to enter Dhaka. So uh, that was the contribution of the paratroopers in the seventy-one war. The sixty-five again, we had a uh, very madman known as uh, Shere Hazi Pir. 
you must have heard of Hazi Peer. Hazi Peer is the pass which connects, you know, south of Peer Punjab to the north of Peer Punjab uh, in the POK side. And uh, uh, Hazi Peer was something before Tiger Hill happened. Hazi Peer, if you want, if you wanted to say something can't be done, you say we can do Hazi Peer, we can do anything. So uh, that was Hazi Peer. And we had uh, uh, one para who was given this uh, opportunity to uh, uh, capture uh, Hazi Peer when others had failed. And uh, this again, uh, again a madman. Only a madman can do such things. Uh, he took his men, and he did not go from the left or the right from the flanks. And military men, you know, do a lot of things. He just climbed straight up. A frontal assault. A frontal assault in the mountains is unheard of, and it took the Pakistan by surprise in bad weather. Uh, it was September. It was raining, and he just climbed straight up with his men. And he took the Pakistan surprise and captured Hazi Peer. The Hazi Peer passed, uh, which of course is a trend later on. And he also was given a Mahabir Chak for that. So, so uh, and of course, I'm not talking others. I'm just giving you a few examples. Uh, that was 65. Uh, let me take, let me talk a little about 47, 48. A very new. Uh, we are very new regiment. We are the new sub regiment with the oldest of the battalion. One para is the oldest battalion of the Indian Army. Uh, we celebrate 250 years in 2011. The oldest gun in the army. That's how we take the seniority from there. It was a senior regiment. And uh, in 1947-48, uh, three para was in Gurgaon. They were to go to uh, uh, Palam and to be flown to, as uh, first battalion to be flown to Srinagar. But they were involved in intense security duties because you know, the riots were going on still in uh, Gurgaon. So it was uh, the Sikhs who went in first. Uh, but the para brigade uh, was pushed into uh, the Noshera sector because, the, you know, the uh, the Pakistanis with the uh, uh, infiltrators that come all the way right up to you know, just short of the jury, you know, Shera. And uh, the commander, paramilitary commander was uh, Brigadier Mohammed Usman, uh, a great man, uh, a posthumous Mahavir Chakra, the brigade commander. And his uh, funeral was attended by no one else other than uh, Pandit Nehru in Delhi. And uh, he was the one, he was known as the, as the Noshera Kashir. He, he was the savior of Noshera. And on 3rd of July, 1948, he was killed, uh, he, he was martyred, he lost his life in the Supreme Secretary in Jhangar. And he said that I will not sleep in a bed till I recapture uh, all the territories. And he was the man uh, who was offered uh, to be the first chief of the Pakistani army by Jinnah. Uh, Jinnah told him, he says, we join the Pakistani army and be the first chief of the Pakistani army. He said, no, my loyalty is to India, to Indian army, and I will not leave my the country, I would not leave the army. So that was Brigadier Muhammad Aswan, uh, who had the opportunity, uh, his cousin some of them left, but he stayed on and uh, he never slept on a bed. He slept on the ground and we still have a memorial in a place called Jhangar. If you, if you visit Jammu and Kashmir, Mashara sector, uh, you will still see, uh, and there are a lot of stories about him because he took the people along. He made a Bal Sena. Bal Sena means uh, Sena of the young. And that Bal Sena uh, was with them, and some of the Bal Sena are still, uh, you know, living. Uh, you talk to them, uh, and they, 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 they no greater hero than uh, him they have seen. Uh, so th this is something uh, uh, about uh, the paratroopers. I think I have done my 40 minutes, uh, uh, so I'll end out here. Uh, uh, thank you very much for a patient hearing. I've just gone on and on. I did no prepared speech. Uh, I just spoke from the heart today. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was lovely. It really gave us a great picture of what uh, the paratroopers are all about. And they are truly the special forces from what you said. So now the topic is open for discussion. People who want to ask can go ahead and comment or ask questions. General Chab, I have a question for you. I have uh, interacted with a lot of people in the armed forces. And one of the things that I've heard is that the Indian armed forces may not have the latest in technology or uh, weaponry, but they more than make it up with the, the spirit and the josh and their fighting skills, the planning strategy, uh, outside of the fact that you have represented that group uh, as an objective uh, outside of what would your comment be on that? I feel very proud when I hear that uh, every time. So uh, I, 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 thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. You're so, uh, you're so very right, absolutely. We don't have the high-end technology. We don't have it. And I, I think that is one of the biggest weaknesses we have. Uh, I'm talking to very informed, uh, you know, uh, informed people. Uh, uh, let me say, 
you know, we are the second largest army, like I said, we are the fourth largest navy. We have, you know, aircraft carriers. Uh, very few countries have that. We are, we are nuclear armed nation. Uh, we are the fourth largest air force. But we are not a military power. We are a military force. We are the intervention operations in the Maldives, in Sri Lanka, uh, and we are done it very, very well. But we are not still a military power. We are still a military force. Why? Two things. One, we are not, we are so dependent on our weapons and equipment and material exports. Uh, we do not have uh, our own, uh, you know, uh, we are not self reliant in defense manufacturing. So much so we don't have a, you know, a, a good assault rifle of our own. It is sad. But it's a fact. We have to look at inwards. We can't be you know, saying we are goody goody, we are the best. No, we, we, we can be the best. We, we are not the best. We have weaknesses, and those weaknesses have to be overcome. Things are changing uh, a little too late, a little too little. Uh, I'm a man in a hurry. I'm a, you know, I'm a fan of my life. I would like to see things change. I would like to see you know, what uh, our parents say, Art Nirbar, uh, India. I would like to see exports. 60% of weaponry is exports. How can we be, how can you talk about strategic autonomy? We don't have strategic autonomy. I, we, we have a limited budget, especially after COVID and what China has done. Uh, the armed forces will be required to more and more and less and less. Let's be facts. We can't be looking at 3% of the GDP. No, we will not get it. We have a, we have a well-being of the 1.38 billion people to care about. Uh, that's important. Uh, the economic uh, development is important. The, uh, the well-being is important. So we don't have the money. And whatever money we have, we have to optimize that. And we're not optimizing it. We have to buy it from abroad. We have to buy it from US, Russia, China, Israel, France. And look at look at the Indians. We buy from everywhere. And then we mix and match. And we optimize it. We exploit it. So I think uh, that is our strength. Otherwise, no nation can you know get equipment from such varied sources uh, and synergize the effectiveness of the whole thing. You know, our, our radars may come from Israel. Uh, our weapon platform may come from France, like in the Rafale. Uh, or our, our guns may come from Russia, uh, and our weapon loading radars come from the US. But we match them. Uh, so that is, it's not that we can't innovate. We, do, we don't, we have the brains. What we lack is the system and the structures. And that is being corrected. So you're right, we don't have the best. But what we have, uh, you know, the British are very unkind to us. They were bad to us, uh, history and British. But one good thing they left behind was, uh, an Indian army uh, with the British ethos, the values, the beliefs, uh, the regimental system. And I was also the uh, director of infantry, infantry the largest arm uh, for a little time. And uh, most of the time, whenever I met the, you know, the foreign uh, chiefs, uh, they, and one of them asked, for, asked that I want to be in the DG infantry. You know, DG infantry is something. Only thing one knows how the regimental system functions. Because it is the regiment, it is Naam Namak Nishan. My regiment takes priority. No. Why, 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 why do these people, uh, they, what they have done, why, what I have spoken about is my, my regiment. It is my unit. It is my sub team. I'll give my life away happily, but I'm not letting anything happen to my flag. Now, no more mission. So you're right, absolutely. Uh, but my heart goes out to the soldiers. We, could, we can equip them better. Thank you. Uh, General, you may be very happy to hear. Yeah. I learned that there an is important a small, to small group. Between which works under Lieutenant General Murthy and uh, retired. He was in, in ordnance factories. And uh, they've all formed, including people who are uh, earlier with Larson and Tubro, people who are with other uh, bigger company. Uh, we all kind of failed to uh, contribute to the defense in manufacturing. We all, I all come from manufacturing sector. Uh, in Product. We might have made some materials, we might have made something else, but somehow we never contributed to the final product. And uh, this team were, uh, meets every second week, and uh, I'm surprised at the openness with which many of the people from the army, uh, Air Force, rather, I mean from the Army, keep talking about the way that the decision making has been so slow. And it's frustrating for the armed forces guys themselves. But there are wheels within wheels, and that is not permitting the decision. I mean, this is what they're all talking about. It's very interesting. But I hope we go ahead now. No, you're absolutely right. You know, we we have a policy. You know, you know I, I speak a lot on this. And you know, I was uh, one of my charters is uh, you know what we call uh, capability development, capability building. Uh, is my charter as. In service as a DGMO, because we will talk to capital development. 
and uh, also uh, as a as a think tank of the ministry of defense and uh, we, we finished a two day seminar uh, webinar today uh, in the evening on 5:30 uh, on force protection you, you're right you know I, I, we went touch with last time you were part of the cia and all of the initiatives and gotham murti of course and very well uh, we talk about it quite often uh, so uh, it's not that the problem with us is uh, and i'm trying to explain things to them it is not the policy the policies are there it is the process and the procedures so they are lethargic they are lengthy we have not changed them so how do we expect to you know uh, to do the problem is the authority and the accountability is not aligned the accountability rests with the services the authority rests with the minister of defense till we align this authority and accountability it is like uh, you know dr saurabh bhargav trying to operate uh, and he he doesn't have the authority to do what he wants to do but he is accountable for something happens to the patient so you get my point so the, the, we we have systemic and structural fault lines which we are trying to correct but it is like i said the, the, the hold of the ministry is a little too much and we, we are speaking about it's not that you know so a lot of us speaking out and and they listen that's not that you know, we are we, we are the same breed uh, and there are there are internal internal fault lines also within the out forces we we also are inter- inward looking we don't trust the industry you know if i would want to say industry you know in 99 when cargill happened uh, i was the director parent director so i thought that is the opportunity to get all the equipment what we were talking about so we we signed we went and signed lot of contracts and i was of course signed to that and two of those contracts came under the scrutiny of the 37 contracts uh, <laughs> which was under scrutiny with the cag and others for not being right and people had you know taken some money i didn't see for nights i said look you know what you know the person is fire वो अलग बात है पैसे की तो बेस की अलग हो जाएगी सब सोचेंगे विनोद राठी भी चोर है तो वी वी डू हैव यू नो यू नो देयर आर प्रॉब्लम्स आई आई एम वेरी आई वाज वेरी अप्रेंसिव ऑफ एक्टिव ऑफ यू नो इंटरेक्टिंग विद इंडस्ट्री व्हेन आई वाज इन सर्विस सो देयर आर देयर आर वी हैव टू वी हैव टू गेट अवे फ्रॉम दैट यू आर राइट थैंक यू यू नो प्रसाद यू मेंशन दैट यू नो यू you met so many people you know the the forge runs because of the people so i, I i'll tell you a very interesting thing so you know i grew up with you know i don't know bunch of 14 15 guys and uh, there are only two of us who are not in the para regiment and uh, you know uncle's son commands uh, his old battalion so uh, as a, you know as a para regiment we are all uh, you know that they uh, you know i'm out of it now but you know they they have all grown into it they all go back to it and that is the reason why that particular regiment i think continues to do extremely well and very motivated people you know yeah for you 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 are deeply part of the regiment <laughs> i wish i was on this <laughs> you are you are but that's like i keep backing on you for anything if you have any any problem i have i'll enough for it one question i have sir i like saurabh was saying now the para is such a unique force and so when we say that the indian army is such a large force in today's modern uh, warfare strategically or tactically is there really a role to have such a large army or should we be more focused in having say multiple para like regiments or multiple well equipped uh, forces which are in strategic locations is that a better way to go forward uh, dr bill i think it's a very interesting question and we been you know banging our heads against it uh, <laughs> we we have to look at the indian context Uh, we have to look at the character uh, uh, as we see it. We have to look at compliance and national security. Uh, we we are not the U.S. of A. We we are not there. Uh, look at look at our borders. Uh, we have fifteen hundred, fifteen thousand one hundred six point seven kilometer land borders. We have unsettled borders with China, three point eight eight kilometers, all in the high altitude areas. Average height four point eight nine meters and above. And in high altitude, as you all know. uh temperatures are high temperatures are low okay, it's not easy it takes a storm i i commanded my core uh, in altitude area uh, flying down flying six days a week from 500 feet to 5000 meters 
walking all the key spending 4 to 5 hours every day there it takes it takes us you know i've gone great uh, i've spotted this from here my head so uh, we also have another 126 kilometers of the glacier siachen glacier we are 742 kilometer line of control so who's going to man that and and our national philosophy is that you will not lose an inch of our territory okay now if that is our if that is the national philosophy that you will not lose an inch of our territory then what do we do it is you know, there's no replacement for our man robotics is fine robotics can do whatever it has to do it is it can assist you it can aid you it can't replace you so we always talk so loosely every day you know you hear a technological army my technology doesn't function sir please i have no power pack at 5000 meters when your power pack is function more than 4 hours or 6 hours it doesn't function how can i rely on a power pack how, how much can i charge it how many charges can it take please develop a power pack for me please develop a uab which can penetrate winds of 100 knots after we we have the, you know i get winds are there winds are 80 knots 100 knots who will penetrate that wind it's okay the human don't, don't use uav i can't retrieve a uav sir i i can't operate a uav out there the very few uav which i can operate they cost a lot of money and mm-hmm. and after a few sorties i got to maintain them i don't have the maintenance i don't have my own uav so it's very easy to sit in delhi uh, in a room and talk of technology you know ai you know we we talk about ten technology even i talk about technology i'm a, i'm a tenth class master but i have studied a lot i am technically i'm not a good but technology you you well the technology i have studied technology right but it, but we have to be practical on ground level and so you can you can talk well, our scientists can talk i can do this so you have taken a technology i know how you taken it you you borrowed it you bought it and you want to force it on us sorry i want something which functions in our rugged terrain Yeah. Something which functions at plus 50 degrees centigrade in Rajasthan, or minus 30 degrees centigrade in the high altitude areas. Mm-hmm. So there are there are issues, uh, you know. So we have yeah. to maintain our forces. If we don't have to lose our territories, we have to maintain our forces. We are not a very large army. Let me tell you that we are not a large. Army. Okay. Yes, we can pull down a little. Uh, it is a very it is a bit normal to say uh, for the size of India, uh, for the borders we have, uh, for our uh, security threats we have today, we have China. China was a long-term threat, but today it is a real and present danger knocking at our doors, and it is it is all high altitude. I, I cannot take anything out there. But how how do you how do you take a 40-ton uh, tank to too many places? How do you take a 20-ton gun? I have to carry everything on my back, and it seems I didn't tell you when I was doing a probation, the back was like it was all you know. Try to carry a pack uh, 500 kilometers. and you badly like you know bangla bharka uh, so it was all full of tapes so you had you know bandaids all over so it's not easy yes you're right we we have to exploit technology where we can we are not doing it we need to so the man is ultimately the best uh, person on the ground no right? yeah, no yeah. so are you having difficulty recruiting more people in today's world are people uh, as keen to join the army as say 25 or 40 years ago uh, as far as the men are concerned uh, uh, we get about uh, uh, depending on the areas uh, in the in the northern belt in you know haryana himachal up bihar uh, we get about 1500 uh, uh, aspirants for every vacancy for every vacancy Yeah. Uh, so in 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 uh, uh, Kerala will be little less, uh, Tamil Nadu little less, uh, Orissa little less. Uh, North East is picking up now. North East again, you know, but too many of them want to join the uh, uh, army. So every village you go to, uh, like when you go to the villages, so delivery you know, North East especially, I saw a lot out there. I saw asking, "Acha, ye pakko wala ghar kis ka? Kya ye foji ka hai?" Okay. No. Uh, It's so that fact. respect is still there. That has so, to be. So, yeah. No, no. Why? Because he gets money, and he mm. makes. You know, he he's got a tin roof. He doesn't have a you know a jhopar ding yeah, on top. Yeah. So he pakka kar kiska ye foji ka hai. So a lot of people know the boards from the north east also want to join the foji. So we know that as of the officer concerned, we are short of officers. 
not because there's no aspirants. Uh, we get about uh, three lakh uh, aspirants for NDA alone, which is uh, which takes about three and thirty uh, for every six months, uh, every three lakh a year. I, I think we can do with a little better material, I suppose. So we're looking at it uh, because the army doesn't pay you very well. Uh, 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 it doesn't, you know, and uh, uh, unfortunately, the aspirations are risen. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the fortunate ones who become a general. Uh, uh, but the, I, I'm point, uh, as they put it, at point zero one two percent. I'm a lucky one. I, the gods are with me always. I, I believe the gods. I don't pray very much. I don't go to the temple. Uh, but they have to honesty of purpose, honesty of intent. Come, pray, and see what will happen. Sir, I have a related question. You know, to recruit, how do you choose people from the paratroop regiment? After all, it's an elite regiment. So, what are the criteria you all look at to accept somebody into the paratroopers? Okay, uh, one of the things we look at is uh, uh, his attitude, uh, his trainability. And uh, more importantly, how he fits into the teams, uh, how adaptable he is. Uh, like I said initially, uh, it's a very uh, a lot of intangibles going to. We just, you know, uh, uh, it is. Uh, we ask to do a lot of uh, things which a normal man would not do. Uh, he would uh, rebel, uh, like eating glass. So you you drink and then you eat the glass. Now who's going to eat the glass? So there's, a, there's, you know, there's a method to the madness. It's a mad one. It's a bad, but I've been trying to explain it to my people. They said, "Why do you do it?" I said, yeah, "I don't know why you do it, but it is, uh, you know, uh, it must have evolved over the years." So uh, what we look at is basically what we're looking at is a man uh, who will give his best, who's trainable, who will never say die, uh, who doesn't know situation point, uh, and who, like, you know, like we say. Uh, who will do the difficult immediately and the impossible immediately takes some time. Uh, so we look at you know the people who will challenge uh, the limits, uh, who can really challenge the limits. And if you can go through the probation, you challenge all limits. Uh, the probation is just too bad. Uh, I don't know how I've been through it. I was just you know lucky. I wanted to give every day. I wanted to give every hour, but I didn't want to join the workers. That was a very show. And uh, well, that's what it is. I, there's no. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's no criteria as such. Uh, it is uh, people are looking at you and they feel that you'll fit into the team. Uh, you're welcome to the team. You'll do well for the team, well for the unit. So you're welcome. You may be physically weak also. It's not that physical treatment or anything. You are mentally very strong. Uh, so th there's no set criteria. We don't have a uh, you know a, a data sheet. We don't have a decision data point. We don't go through that. Uh, look, he ticked, ticked all these things, so he should be selected. No. Uh, it is more from the head and the heart, or both. General, uh, firstly, thank you for taking so much time with all of us. Uh, I'm a services brat. My father served in the okay. Indian Force and, uh, in, and retired immediately after the 71 war when he was in uh, the Northeast sector at Hasimara. So I have grown up uh, in Air Force camps. Uh, you know, a lot of things like discipline and other things uh, are associated with the military. But one of the things that really impacts one of the more important things was this, uh, and it came from something that in the camps was Sarva Dharma Samsta. You know, uh, I don't know whether it was Sangatan or Samsan, but Sarva Dharma Samsan. It, it was there. There was, uh, there was no way that we looked at uh, each other as anything more than human beings and fellow countrymen. Uh, your, you know, your story about uh, Muhammad uh, Usman who refused to sleep in a bed, it, it touched a big, big chord. But this aspect of Sarva Dharma tolerance and living together and enjoying it, it seems to be a less known fact of the military. And in Yeah, we are frozen. You could hear me? No, the last oh, bit we couldn't. Yeah. Last bit last, we couldn't. I'm seeking generals. Uh, you know, it's a lesser known fact about the uh, about the armed forces. But at the core of it, I think there is this thing that today's society needs it much more than ever. 
So is there any way in which these things can be brought out and popularized? And You are absolutely right. Just outside Hashimara Air Force Station, you turn left, you go to that, you know, engineer's depot. Right next to that, we have a several barrel style. And I'm sure you must have seen it in 1971 also. So, yeah. uh, 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 I, I, I was found in Hashimara and uh, Pinaguri. Uh, I, I, I commander brigade there. Hashimara was part of my, I was, I was the port commander there. And Kutna, Hashimara brigade was part of it. And the Air Force Station also was there very much. So, uh, you know, we have it all over. Uh, but my, my religion is my religion of my men, my religion of my troops. Uh, we, we, you know, uh, I had tweeted uh, some time back uh, on the Eid day, uh, Ravan Saab in Uwara. That is the greeting. Okay. And I tweeted on that. Ravan Saab, Jawan telling is uh, Ravan Saab in Uwara. And that went on to get about you know, a few thousand likes, six thousand likes or so. Uh, so th that, is, uh, that is what we are. But how do we, you know, the army is insulated. We, we, need, we have to remain insulated. We have to remain isolated. But the army is air force and navy included. I don't think it's very good thing for us to deal, uh, you know, go out openly and try to preach people, especially today, uh, nowadays. You know, we, unfortunately, we are uh, uh, getting divided on uh, a particular religious lines, and as the armed forces, we've got to protect ourselves first, uh, uh, which is very important because we we remain a political, we remain secular totally. Uh, our religion is, uh, you know, uh, all in my heart. The religion of a man is the religion of a man. Uh, if uh, I, I had, uh, I was, hung, I went to a unit with uh, troops uh, who followed, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sikhism. Like we have Sikh troops in our unit, so it was Safi Rab, and we we divided our bar and did everything. And uh, we, when I was money was found, I was we had Christians out there. So uh, Sunday was Sunday was church, right? And uh, mind you, uh, even in all places, you know, there's a place called Chakanda Bagh uh, in Punch. Uh, that is one of the one of the places other than uh, you know Kamal Setu and Uri. Uh, when we have the bus service, the Pakistanis from POK coming our side, our people on that side. And once they come our side, the first thing they see is MMG. Ah. Okay. Mandir Masjid Gurdwara. Yeah. It's written big out there, MMG. Mandir Masjid Gurdwara, Bhadme Lekha. And that is, a, that is within 50 uh, meters of the uh, zero line on our side. So when, the, when they come, they, they, they're very really surprised to see MMG. So when you, when you talk to them, they, they come in, they, they, the eyes open up. They said, we were told that you can't practice religion, you have to sub religion practice something. So we, we have our strengths also. It's not that we don't have. Uh, but I don't think the armed forces should take on anything. We should, we should no, do no. that right, in charge. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, I, we, we should not get divided. Sorry. Uh, but the fact remains, uh, I don't know if we start replicating this. No, uh, the, might have Bangalore. Bangalore is a very good place to start this. The armed forces have done a fantastic job of this, and society needs it desperately. I think that's it. I don't know how to bridge the gap. In fact, I was suggesting to uh, Mathuraman uh, that you know, in the Abbas colony, we should uh, we should have a small Sarva Dharma Samstan thing where everybody. I think it's an excellent idea. Excellent of... idea. I say I say in you know, AWH, the army will call in organization colony. Mm -hmm. We are one of the largest colonies in Asia, three thousand houses. And uh, we are having a well, now. So we are reconstructing now. It'll have everything in it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. General Sundaram, thank you for joining us. Do you have any comments? You're mute. You're muted. Yeah. No. General uh, Bhatia told about the equipment and how much you are dependent on outside. That is one of the things we can can be done, but it requires, I don't want to get into it now. It has been done in the missile program when the entire West shut us off. And uh, I don't want to talk, well, I was with the Prithvi. I was, I used it with, uh, I started with 15% Indian and delivered it to the army with 95% Indian and one year ahead of schedule. People said, how is it possible? You are in utopia. I don't want to get to the separate issue of itself. But what General Bhatia said is right. I have been at uh, in the Himalayas, Sela and all. We have had shortage of spares. We have had shortage of various things. Nobody will help. And this thing of saying, oh, can just hire it out to somebody. They will do it. It doesn't work. 
we have to be we have to depend on ourselves our, at least in the critical technology critical equipment that is where we cannot let down people like general batia people in the armored core because they depend on this at the last minute doesn't work and if something doesn't work we must be honest and well this will not do only this much and it will take us this much time and this is this much of money and that has to be something which was accepted in the missile program we bought it and we delivered it and where some places are not do it they do not deliver in time i will leave it at that i have a philosophy of truth transparency trust then comes teamwork comes there and tenacity and uh, please don't remember everything has a time and cost there are six principles when i suppose that and along with quality people said you are doing utopia india will get quality of course you can get quality can deliver on schedule of course you can deliver on schedule but your schedule should be realistic so that you don't take people for a ride i will stop with that because then i get a little you know can be done has been done but i find still we are giving um, wrong schedules i know it's not possible with that type of thing i was the first thing i was told to get it happened 40 years ago when i gave that i was told to get lost i did get lost but i didn't get lost for i delivered i delivered the prithvis i worked with the agnis i delivered the akash in a bigger way it can be done in many places but we must be truthful and honest i find that place both for your uh, soldiers in the field and as far as the politicians in the country as to what we can do and what we cannot do that has to be remembered i will leave it with that message doctor and uh, thank you thank you thank you i think so sir thank 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 you very much sir you know uh, the veteran israel development program mdp is a, is a, is a fantastic example to replicate the isro is a very good example to replicate the uh, dae the department of atomic energy commission the bag just so fantastic example to replicate I, i i keep saying why can't we do that if we can do uh, if isro can do what it is doing uh, if i the integrated missile development program the dp can do what it is what it has done you know we have actually beaten the world the world knows it and we have produced it at, at the lowest cost uh, and in the in the minimum time frame so if we can do that why can't we do the others so that's my question sir i'm not saying that uh, you know we are not done we we are we are very really proud of the achievements uh, but we can do much more we have the capabilities we have the uh, we have the brains you know most of the uh, top companies of of the country are being led by indians mutraman sir any final comments no no nothing particular i really appreciate the talk we have uh, oh. shibu tell me sir. just wanted to since from the human aspect of uh, the army uh, i have always had a great regard for the quality of the army personnel irrespective of which level he occupies in the army uh, in our training program i employ we employ about 25 army ex, ex army personnel and they are the best run units of training program i would imagine in the whole country actually the kind of discipline that they teach the youngsters the kind of rigor the the kind of uh, moral standards all of them are exceptional and i think we should salute the indian army for many many things that they have done wonderfully well uh, sir, sir, thank you very much i can take can take 30 seconds you know yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we cricket is a national passion uh, all of us watch cricket so for long years now we used to say uh, uh, the, the indian team can you know take uh, defeat from the jaws of uh, victory you know we we'll lose a one run half a run two run two ball So we always say, you know, Indian team, you know, we, we always take defeat on the job of victory. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying anything, but let's just that. And then uh, uh, our paradigm center is in Bangalore. I think most of you know that. And uh, the, that's where our uh, core is, regiment center in Bangalore. And uh, then uh, the National Cricket Academy came to us. They said, why can't you train our cricketers? And Dhoni, Dhoni of course, is the honorary lieutenant colonel. Uh, I was very fortunate to have picked them. and uh, then we trained them uh, gave them a capsule in the parachute regiment training center and uh, since then i think there is a change not because of the that training 
but the attitude has changed now now we you know take <laughs> victory or the dodge job or defeat uh, it's a lighter vein though don't take don't take me seriously but uh, i i would like to believe that we contribute general i just want to ask you a small question uh, was general chari uh, your batchmate or your around you who was in lieutenant he's seen it lieutenant general chari yes he's seen it yeah he is my classmate from iit madras okay who, who finished his engineering and went to kadakwasla for the uh, indian military academy and then joining the engineer corps he died last year but he was an exceptional army guy in many many ways so i always take his example about uh, quote, yeah fantastic guys yeah salute to the army you want to salute to look after yeah. okay thank you sir we had a fantastic evening great discussion and great talk really Shibu. enjoyed it thank Shibu. you so much Shibu. any Shibu. final comments somebody was saying something no shibu and sarav thank, thank you for getting these people on this yeah yeah lovely. Lovely. okay sir okay thank you, thank you. good night thank you so much thank you it's an honor and a privilege both thank you very much all the very best maybe thank we you. should invite left general sundram to give one of the talks in the future yes 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 <laughs> that's the next <laughs> world of experience to share absolutely Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you doctor. Thank, thank you, Murali, for asking me to come. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.